way things are going in the world at the moment, we all need a bit of positivity and motivation. And we've got some incredibly inspiring guests lined up today. They've all done something remarkable to uplift the people in their communities. But of course, the biggest news on everybody's lips at the moment is President Ramaphosa's speech from last night. And of course, we're going to be unpacking exactly what was mentioned and how it affects you. If you've got any questions or comments for us that you'd like to add to the conversation, then please do head over to our Twitter, to our Facebook, to our Instagram, and remember to use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Absolutely, Jeannie. We're looking forward to reading your comments. But good afternoon from me, Palisa Tempe, here in our Afternoon Express kitchen. Dumi, how are you doing this Monday? I'm great, thanks. How are you, darling? I'm B. I'm really, really good. And I can see that you've got some of my favorites up your sleeve today. Yeah. So what do you have cooking in the kitchen? So today we're keeping it very fresh. We're going to be making some delicious waffles that are perfect for mommy and babies. Uh, with cheese and tomato and basil. Uh, everything good. And we're going to be using our NutriKids um, clover milk. Now, this sounds like the iconic recipe to be trying this week because we know that all the kids are on holiday some kids have been sent home quarantined and a lot of you are working from home so this is the perfect recipe to chill with the kids enjoy in the kitchen and have some of that some of that bonding time and if you'd like to try this at home simply sms the keyword clover to 33650 but for now over to Jeannie with the experts in the lounge Thank you so much, Pali. Now, last night, the president made one of the most important addresses in recent history. He outlined South Africa's plan to curb the coronavirus and what restrictions will be put into place. So we are joined now this afternoon by infectious disease expert, Dr. Emil Reed, to unpack exactly what went down and what this country, or what this means for the country. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much for being back. Thank you. So last night, I think the whole country was waiting for a while <laughs> for, for President Ramaphosa to, you know, speak to the nation about coronavirus. Let's quickly unpack. What were some of the main points that you took from what he said? Well, it was a speech definitely uh, worth waiting for. Oh, I thought um, so I think that, that, that was amazing. Yeah, he was and amazing. And I think what our president did, he, he owned uh, what he said. He yeah. took leadership. Yeah. And I think the most important thing was we are going to restrict people traveling in from, from, from high risk areas. Yeah. We, we're not going to allow our, our people from South Africa to actually travel to, to high risk areas yeah. as well. Yeah. So unfortunately, those visas that are already in place, it's going to be revoked and they're not going to allow any any travel to any of these high-risk uh, uh, countries, which is amazing. Mm. Um, also, we're going to, to block um, uh, uh, people from, from domestic um, travel. Uh, travel as well. And I think the, the important thing for, for us, we're going to, to need to socially distance ourselves yeah. from one another. Exactly. What does socially disting, distancing mean? For you. Well, usually, like what does that look like? Are you, you staying at home, not going out? Well, important to know that if you have a, a, a crowded place, uh, yeah. like a soccer stadium, like a, a rugby stadium, yeah. the risk of transmitting the virus is massive. So, so as soon as you're going to have a gathering of more than 50 or 100 people, um, it should not be allowed. Yeah because that's the, 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 the breeding ground for spreading sure. something like uh, yeah. the coronavirus. But what does this look like for people who are at home now? Are they not going to go to work? Are they not going to go shopping? Because I know at the moment it's a huge issue with people going panic spree buying. And yeah. I, I just think that's not necessary because then, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that won't be able to get the things that they need as well when they need it. And w what should that self-containment look like for people just to avoid public spaces? Yeah, I think the important thing that, that we also spoke about uh, for, a, for a week, for the last week now, is that the important thing is it's spread via droplet uh, yeah. spread. So one need to avoid being close to other people. And I think the important uh, people that we don't want to be close to are those people who traveled from, from high risk areas yeah. and are now sharing a space with, with us. And um, if, if one look at the, the people that did test positive over the last uh, few weeks, I think currently we're standing on a total of 63 cases. Yeah. And all of them traveled from, from a high risk country. Okay. Which, which means that it was virus that was imported from another country. Um, we couldn't prevent it, 
but now we have to contain, contain it. it. Yeah. So you know what I've realized since I saw you last actually is how many times I touch my face during the day. Wow. You know, it happens subliminally. You don't actually realize how often you're touching a surface and then you're touching your face and you're touching your mouth or you're scratching your nose. It happens all the time. But now just say you are one of those people who have traveled from a high risk country into South Africa or you've been in contact with one of those high risk travelers. What is your self isolation look like at home once you've been government tested? Yeah, I think the important thing is people that are ill and have symptoms can shed the virus. Yeah. If you are asymptomatic, we expect a low virus load, which means that they cannot infect somebody else okay. because they are not symptomatic. Okay, so the symptoms is what is contagious. Exactly. Okay. And, 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 and the big thing associated with the symptoms is what we call viral uh, shedding. Yeah. And that is what comes through our saliva, through our sputa, etc. And, and if there's no viral shedding, you cannot spread the virus. Okay. So, so if we are in contact uh, or been in contact with somebody from a high risk area, they're asymptomatic, they've been cleared. Yeah. I mean, we know that the chances of transmitting something you don't have is zero. Yeah, is zero. Okay, but what does that look like? If it's uh, because then the way you made it sound now sounds like it could be quite difficult to actually get it unless somebody spits in your mouth or unless you exchange. You know, unless you kiss somebody. But then how are children getting it? Is it the thing, like, if I lick my hand and if I touch the couch and then a child then touches it and then touches their mouth, is that then going to...? Well, it, it should happen almost immediately. OK. Although we have seen that the virus does not survive for extremely long, like four or six hours, yeah. with the immediate contact of, of the sputum or the saliva being in yeah. touch at that moment in time and you immediately come and touch it, there is a risk if that person yeah. is infected. Okay. If that person is not infected, there's no risk. Then I've read the most devastating thing, and I want everybody to, at home to please do take special note of this, is, you know, there was a post saying that a lot of people are taking their pets to the SBCA and various other places um, because they're concerned that either their pets or they can get coronavirus from their pets, and that is absolutely not true. Please let us know about the infection rate with pets. I think it's absolutely unproven at this point. Yeah. And where, the, where it comes from is you remember the first coronavirus virus outbreak called SARS yes. actually had its origin um, in cats. Okay. And, and with the second outbreak of coronavirus infection, which was MERS, the Middle East countries, um, the originator uh, 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 animal was the camel. Yeah. Um, so people at this point in time, we're not sure where this coronavirus uh, started, whether it was a dog, whether it was a snake, whatever. Hence the reason for people to believe it might be the dogs being the carrier of, okay. of these coronaviruses. Right. Because animals frequently get and are carriers of okay. coronaviral disease. But your, so your animals are safe in your homes with you. Exactly. They are not harming you. They, exactly. Please do not... Uh, make any radical decisions with your pets at this time. So let's just recap. I know we discussed this last week, but it is really important. Should you be coming into South Africa from a high-risk country, you go home first, then get tested from home? Because I know there's also another scam happening at the moment where people are coming to your house saying that they're government officials and then scamming you and robbing you yes. that they want to test you. So yes. how does... Well, let us know what the yes. system is and what the, the practice is in place. I think the important thing is you should not go to a hospital okay. um, environment where there's a lot of other people you can infect. Yeah. The best thing is to contact the number that we're going to share with the viewers as well mm -hmm. and you inform them of um, where you've travelled from and they actually go through uh, a few questions they ask you and then the decision is made uh, to test you. Okay. So, so they will come or arrange with where they're going to meet you. They come and test you. Yes. And um, you are then self-quarantined until the results are available. Yeah. And, and again, that is a process that is taken. And I've heard 
uh, numerous scams where people are doing finger prick testing yeah. um, and, and it's not true. Okay. Um, the only real test is either a, a, a pharyngeal swab yeah. or a sputum yeah. that we send for what we call a PCR. And a PCR is looking for the genetics of the okay. specific virus. Why two weeks? Like, why, if, if you're going to be incubated, why is yes. it two weeks? Yes. Normally, we find that people that are infectious, yeah. they sort of take roughly between two and 14 days in order to shed that virus. Okay. And, and we've seen it now with a few cases in, in Nigeria where they had follow-up follow tests mm. uh, conducted and after about 12 to 14 days, the, the viral shedding went down to zero and they were no longer infective okay. anymore. So the, the, the reason for 14 days of quarantine mm. is because after that 14 days, you are no longer shedding the virus and you cannot spread the Great. virus at all. Thank you so much for being here, Doctor. So, of course, the info line on if, or any information that you need, if you need to be tested, is on screen right now. But I think the important part to remember is do not panic. Do not go and feel like you need to load your kitchen up with bully beef and toilet paper and all the rest. Just exercise a lot of caution. Clean your hands. Sanitize everything around you as much as possible and avoid contact with people that may have traveled from high-risk countries in the recent time. Thank you very much for being here. Stay safe. Pleasure. We'll, Thank I'll, you. I'll bury you just now. <laughs> Thank you. You said it, girl. And just to reiterate South Africa, first and foremost, remember not to panic because all of these restrictions are in place to steer South Africa away from ending up in a situation like we've seen in other countries. So for now, do your part. Keep safe and wash your hands. Speaking of washing your hands, I mean, Dumi, being in the kitchen or just interacting daily, it's so important to wash your hands. So let me give you some it soaps. Is. And I'm going to add some. But I read something really, really interesting, that every time you wash your hands, you need to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Now, that seems like a really, really long time, right? Yeah, so what could you do in that time? You'd probably sing a song. Yeah. I can think of, like, the ABC, the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I think that's 10 seconds as a yeah. whole, so twice, perhaps? Yeah, that's so, 10 seconds. but a lot of people get bored singing Happy Birthday twice or saying the ABC. So I've come up with a couple of songs that I love that have choruses that are 20 seconds long. Yeah. So Beyonce's Love on Top, <laughs> Baby, it's you, you're the one I love. Or, of course, if you're more into some journeys, don't stop believing, that chorus is 20 seconds long. Think? Or if you're okay. trying to entertain the kids, the wheels on the bus go round and round. That's another 20 <laughs> second song. And that's so perfect. Sure for them since they're going to be you, home and all. Yeah. So also another, another trick is that when you close your tap, close it with a paper towel because if you use your hands, you then the germs clean. that you just put on the tap come onto your hands. So make sure you stay dry, stay safe, and get to singing every single time you wash your hands. And Trust sanitize, me. Sanitize. And sanitize always. Thank you, Dumi. <laughs> but after the break, we're making a delicious meal that will prepare the kids whilst they're at home. See you after the break. support, we are now able to donate 20,000 pairs of Smart Step school shoes to children in need. Celebrate goodness when you buy a crush. Dial the number on the pack for a chance to win your share of cash prizes and school fees. Crush, share the goodness.
Country Kids. Good for mum, way better for kids. Made with love by Clover. <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express, where our hands are clean and ready for action. Now, the Clover Nutri Kids ready to drink full cream milk is a great source of protein and is enriched with vitamins and calcium to aid the development of strong, healthy kids. And if you're looking for another ways to include this into your kids' diet, then we reckon our cheese and tomato waffles are the way to go. Plus, this quick and easy recipe um, you can be used for lunch while the kids are home over this period. SMS the keyword Clover to 33650 to get this quick and easy recipe. SMSs cost one round fifty, and free SMSs do not apply. Chef Dumi, I'm yes, telling darling. you, my hands have never felt so soft. I mean, I know, with right? all this washing and sanitizing <laughs> and moisturizing and washing and sanitizing, they are ready for action. Yes, <laughs> so let's get them dirty again so we can wash and sanitize again. Yeah. <laughs> so like you said, we're making the cheese and chive uh, waffles today, and we're going to start off with our dry ingredients. So okay. what I've got here is I've got our flour that we've just measured out, and then to this, you know, with mostly with baking, it always is important to do dry ingredients first and then after that mix in the the wet ingredients after that so yes. I've just put in some baking powder into our flour as well as some salt mm -hmm. so we're going to mix those ingredients together and mm -hmm. everything here has already been measured out at Everything's, home so yes. if you're following the recipe step by step on your device all these measurements will be on uh, detailed right correct there. yes so the only thing that I will measure out uh, for everyone to see is our milk mm -hmm. and we're just going to be using one cup of the clover kids milk for our recipe so I'm going to go in first making a bit of a well in the center with mm -hmm. our eggs as well as our butter that's been melted because Beautiful. it's going to form part of our, of our wet ingredients here and then to that I add one cup of our NutriKids Clover Milk. Beautiful. And then we go in with it and then perfectly mix everything together. Mm. It is at this point where I usually like to add my flavorings and seasonings. So I'm gonna go in with my chives over here. Beautiful, okay. okay can I ask you just to help me with that? I got you, rather. I got you, I got you. All right, and then you can go in with the cheese there after. Okay, so this is basically a waffle that has um, just decided to show off and show out because <laughs> this waffle has it everything in it. School, girl. No, it's delicious. <laughs> no, I love um, spinning and adding things to classic recipes because that's just how you have fun in the kitchen. Basically. Don't make the same things, creating just staleness in the kitchen. We exactly. want things that are fresh, we want things that are inspired, but things more importantly that are healthy. And things that are fun for the kids as well. Since they're going to be home over this period, it's a perfect time to get them involved as well so nice. this is when you can add whatever your child likes if they've got any favorites this is the best time to do that mm -hmm. and always make sure with such recipes if you're going to be doing something in the waffle machine always make sure that it's already been sprayed with a non-stick spray uh -huh. that way the stuff doesn't burn whatever you're making and if it doesn't you, stick to yes um, it doesn't stick to the actual waffle machine and then also if you're going to be making stuff for kids you know they don't like their veggies so we like to incorporate <laughs> a lot of the yeah. veggies at this point so uh -huh. this is where you'd add all your additional flavorings okay. luckily we've got some that we made earlier. These you know look so good, yeah. Dumi. I mean, <laughs> these are golden brown to perfection. Yes. They're crispy on the outside, soft and succulent on the inside. On the so inside. this is beautiful. Something definitely to try. So basically here we just start plating. Yes, so we just add your flavoring here. So if you are like me and like to go extreme and try different things, you'd probably mm. do like a bacon and banana or whatever. Oh, I wow. like to, I'm extreme like that. But I've never tried that. It light. Bacon and banana. <laughs> the little ones, yes. Yeah. And what I like about this recipe is that it's taking something that we already use in our yes. kids' lunch boxes, things that our kids already enjoy for lunch on a daily, something like cheese and tomato, yeah. adding a spin on it, making it waffle, making it nice, um, and this is also filling. It is very filling, because mm. this would basically form part of your sandwich. Instead of the normal bread, just use waffles, because you get them involved as well. Yeah, I love this. And we've also got our greens, because yes. no recipe is complete without, without greens. greens. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Perfect. And, and then, then we, we go just, with, just we keep layering up however you see, this would be an, exp an explore a game with them. See how <laughs> how how tall your waffle tower can be. So I kind of like that going. game. <laughs> I kind of like, like a waffle Jenga. This is a lot of fun. This is something that you can try at home. A lot of us are going to be spending a whole 21 days is a long time, Dumi. Let me tell you something. <laughs> with these bans and these restrictions on our country, which is something we're so grateful for. So thank you for making sure that all the South Africans are safe, secured, and taken care of. Let's keep healthy, everyone. Good for mom. Way better for the kids. It's the keyword clover to 33650 for this great recipe. But if you need to see how this is made one more time, here's a recap.
loved by Clover. Nutri Kids, good for mum, way better for kids. Made with love by Clover. Now, acts of ordinary courage and brave compassion that put the health of patients first have to be applauded, especially in these times. Now, these are the everyday heroes in the healthcare profession. A few weeks ago, News 24 and Adcock Ingram OTC launched Sponsors of Brave, a campaign celebrating and sharing the stories of pharmacists and healthcare professionals who have gone above and beyond the day-to-day -day call of duty. Today, we meet the second nominee inspiring his community community. Pharmacist Philip Jordan saw the need to bring pharmacies to the townships and rural areas to help the locals by offering convenient access to medical assistance. Now this inspired him to kickstart the pilot pharmacy Kubetswana just outside of Clarence in the Free State. Take a look at this incredible story. What makes him brave is starting something on your own, not knowing whether it will succeed or it will fail, how long it will take, especially at his age. I don't know if I consider myself brave. <laughs> Maybe a bit insane, but we had to take the challenge, you know. Right old age of 62, I've decided let's move out of the big city and then uh, come into the, into the rural area. This is the first time to see the pharmacy at the township. We have a strong partnership and they play a good role uh, in our health and community's health. Kubitswana Pharmacy is uh, a community pharmacy in the township of Paiming, which is outside the village of Clarence. We couldn't put a permanent brick structure onto the property, so we thought, okay, well, let's convert a container. It's the, the first pharmacy that I know in, in location, not in town. So it's a big challenge for the Tefil, I think, and even for, for us, the, the community, it's a big one, but it's a nice challenge. The important thing is that the medicine is close to the people. This is a trial run. Uh, well, it's a test bed, actually. If this works, we would like to put this out into various communities because I think that there is a need for pharmacies in, in townships, especially in the rural areas. I so wish that most of the bosses, they were like him. We should have lived in a better world. It's a sweet, humble, friendly, approachable, professional. Sometimes I feel like I'm working with my dad, not my boss. <laughs> what I believe what pharmacy should be is to help people. And if we can't help people, then what's the point of surviving in life? <laughs> Absolutely amazing work from Philip Yordan. Now, you can nominate the pharmacist or healthcare professional in your community by making a real difference. And of course, you could stand a chance to win 5,000 Rand. Plus, there will be two winners from the nominations. Now, the judges will select one winner and your votes will select another. So these winners will win a trip to an overseas medical conference of their choice for themselves and the opportunity, of course, to pay it forward by donating 25,000 Rand to a registered NPO charity of their choice. To nominate, go to news24.com or partners24.com uh, forward slash sponsors of Brave. And of course, let's make South Africa brave again. I've never met someone with a heart like this. She embodies what it means to be selfless. Even when I was in a state of panic, she showed me true bravery. Often the bravest people don't see themselves as others do. Join us in celebrating these brave heroes. Nominate the pharmacists and healthcare professionals in your community making a real difference and stand a chance to win 5,000 Rand. I'm loving all of these nominees. I mean, South Africa, how will you choose just one? And of course, the judge is having the incredible responsibility to choose the other winner. I mean, I'm looking forward to finding out. After the break, we meet, small uh, we meet an inspiring small business owner from Cape Town who is using her public relations company to help uplift other small businesses in her community. See you after the break. Next time on Tropical Island of Treasure Curacao, 
After some dramatic twists in the first week of team challenges, it's time for the first elimination. What? Now we get to see who will double cross who. Ah! What was the strategy? We're not a threat. Betrayal always comes from those closest to you. How do you play this game with an honest heart? Catch Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Repeat Saturdays at 8 p.m. Only on SABC3. Everyone's been <laughs> practicing their little hellos. <laughs> Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, entrepreneur Busi Swaluchaba from Cape Town started her company in 2015. Blue Space Communications is a public relations boutique that focuses on small businesses in her community. Now, these emerging entrepreneurs often struggle to get their name out there and to make connections with corporate and government to get themselves to the next level. So, this is where Busi Swa stops, uh, steps in. And for her, it's actually always been a really great passion to give back. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, ladies. And congratulations on all that you've achieved so far. I mean, I'm a small business owner as well, and I know that it is definitely not an easy task, especially that first year. But tell us a little bit about your aspiration, your dream to become an entrepreneur. Where did that stem from? Okay, so mine specifically came through circumstance. I was retrenched after having um, been in the industry for 11 years in the corporate space. Stressful. And two months after, I thought, let me just give it a shot. And literally five years later, I've been at it. Wow. <laughs> so this is where we see your passion for being an entrepreneur come in and tie in with giving back to the community and uplifting those that you live around daily. You started Blue Space Communications. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that you do and how you connect local business owners with corporates and government? 
Okay, so our major role is to connect entrepreneurs to their larger markets, right? And our main role is to ensure that we bridge the gap between SMMEs, corporates and the government. So we have signature events which connect corporate and small businesses. So it, an, an open dialogue continues around what does who and um, the, the, the diverse roles within the different segments. Oh, wow. Amazing. And we also know that, you know, a little birdie told us that from the 1st of February, you set out a target and you've been trying to raise funds because you've got like a three year strategic plan that you want to roll out for the business. Can we ask, are we allowed to ask, have you hit your target? Because it ended on the 14th, right? Of yes. March. So how did it go? Okay, so the campaign is still live, but this is literally our last week. Our goal was initially 40,000 to raise funds, obviously, for the business and to get our strategy rollout. But we just hit 12,000. So oh, you're almost there. Yes. <laughs> almost Amazing. There. Congratulations. Thank you. Very, very exciting. One week for it to go. Yeah, so sure. this is basically just a platform that anyone can, you know, contribute contribute if they want yeah. to, if they want to become a donor? How yes, do definitely. Donor? Okay, so we currently listed now on Back and Body. So my details are on Back and Body on how to pledge. Yeah. Initially, we're not just looking for the funds, but any other resources that yeah. complement the yeah. growth or rather the initial goal. Stunning. I think it's so brave what, you're, what you've done as well. And I think without major risk doesn't come major reward. But I think for a lot of people watching that do want to start small businesses and want to become entrepreneurs, what were the struggles that you wish you knew then that you knew now that you can hand out advice on? We spend a lot of time strategizing. We yeah. do market research and three years or five years later, you actually haven't started. Mm -hmm. So anyone that wishes to start must just do it more, almost immediately. Yeah. So there's no such thing as waiting until you're ready. No, you no, just got to go for it. That is such good <laughs> advice because you know how often, and I'm guilty of this as well, I talk myself into something and then I give myself enough time to talk myself out of it, mm. which actually you should just <laughs> yeah. jump into the deep end. And the ideas if, if keep you, changing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Beautiful. Now, Busiswa, we also know in the current climate, I mean, this is the buzzword everyone is speaking about it, the coronavirus. And we've touched on it, Jeannie, yeah. um, and of course our incredible doctor in the beginning of the show. Mm. But now, how does it trickle down to small businesses? How does it affect small businesses? And if you are in this situation, how do you ensure that you still have food on the table? Because a lot of people are staying at home, they're not going out, they're not engaging. I think now's the best time to use social media or online presence to the best of our um, capacity mm. because we do have this, these platforms. Let's do virtual meetings. Um, we have mm. unlimited mm. apps, you know. Let's, let's try and shift away from physical contact for a bit <laughs> and let's just sanitize. Exactly. Yeah. So Skype is our new best friend. All Definitely. meetings. Yeah, this is now the real time where when people say, you call a meeting, this could have been an email. Yeah. Now they're really going to be sending there we go. email. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, essentially what your company does is, you know, spreading positivity and good messages around. Tell us a little bit more about Blue Space. Okay, so we are a public relations boutique yeah. which helps connect businesses to their larger markets. And we do a, a, a wide range of events that cater specifically for those different segments. Yeah. Um, for example, we've got our, our next one on the 1st of April yeah. and we're launching an artist. So we're bringing exactly. in industry aspects, we're bringing in people in the fashion space yeah. to sort of have that dialogue of how do we collaborate or yeah. how do we take brands to the next level as a collective. Amazing. You have such a clear vision for all those people you collaborate with and these small businesses that you work with. But what's the, your vision for Blue Space? Where do you want to see Blue Space going to? So for the, for the current year, we actually have a specific goal, which is to build our first co-working space in okay, Kailicha. Exactly. So the space won't just be your typical office space where entrepreneurs come in and plug in their laptops yeah. and leave when they're done, mm -hmm. but it will be an interactive space, a to-go office if you need yeah. uh, assistance in completing applications forms, for example. And does anything like that exist at the moment in Kailicha? Not that I know of. <laughs> oh, wow, that is going to be a huge success, Definitely. actually. That's amazing. And what challenges do you see currently, just before we wrap up, within the Kailicha community that you've experienced, that people around you experience on the daily, for you to be this positive change? I think being known uh, that you're actually part of a certain industry, 
Um, for me personally, public relations has always been a, a niche or rather a taboo in terms of township businesses because they don't know when they need it or why they need it. So for me, it's, it's, it's still pretty much educating people on yeah, that. the value. I can imagine that is quite tough. But thank you so much for being here today yeah, and sharing your incredible journey with us. So we've got more inspiration coming up on the show with Bradley van Rienen a little bit later, who said no to a life of gangsterism and instead chose to use his voice to inspire and motivate others. Find your smooth fortune with Tropica. Buy a Tropica, follow the entry details on the pack and stand a chance to win your share of 1 million rand in prizes. Such as a trip for two with KLM to Amsterdam, LG G8X cell phones, LG TVs and dishwashers, guest vouchers, guest watches and accessories, plus the smooth grand prize of a Suzuki Ignis. The more Tropica you buy, the more chances you have to win. Tropica. Nothing smoother. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I hope that you are having a wonderful Monday afternoon in your self-isolation. Now, Bradley van Rienen grew up in a loving home in Cape Town and showed promise of a career in soccer. However, during his school years, he was exposed to the world of drugs and alcohol, which led him down a really dark road to daily substance abuse and ultimately multiple attempts at suicide. It was after a spiritual encounter that Bradley turned his life around and said, Today he uses his voice to inspire and motivate others. So if you have any comments or questions that you would like to add to the conversation, then head over to our social media account and remember to use that hashtag Afternoon Express. Welcome Hi, to the Bradley. loft, How Bradley. Uh, good afternoon. So good I to feel be like here. I want to elbow you, but actually, <laughs> you know, upon thinking about it, I think Cyril Ramaphosa got it a bit wrong because you cough into your elbow yeah. all the time. So we should actually <laughs> do a little, you know, those foot. Since you're a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We just, I love that. Yeah. I mean, the boy's got skills. <laughs> I 
no, that is definitely one way to say, yeah. hello, I have arrived. Yeah. With a little bit of a and we're having a ball. Yeah. I love that. Definitely. And something that you are having a ball with is all the inspiration and the motivation yeah. that you impart yeah. onto others. But I just have to start at the very top. Uh -huh. You call yourself an inspirational misfit and guru. I mean, that title <laughs> is quite intriguing on its own. Can you break that down yeah. for so, us? So, so in the, when I started off in the beginning, uh, on this journey of inspiring people, I was trying to categorize myself. Mm -hmm. And I checked the specs out of the various categories and I discovered I don't fit the specs yeah. of motivational speaker or uh, coach. or. Yeah. And then I realized, okay, so if I don't fit the specs, then I must be a misfit. But I love inspiring people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna duplicate. I'm not going to compete. I'm going to create. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? My life, only live once, I'm gonna create my own path, yeah. inspirational misfit. And have you asked the question, why that? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I absolutely I love, love about your story is because it just goes to show how quickly somebody can get caught up in the wrong yeah. thing. Uh, loving family, so much amazing promise with football, and then it, it probably happened really quickly for you that you had one joint or whatever you had and your life took a spiral. What happened? Like, what happened? <laughs> I, I think at that stage, I was in a, in a moment of transition. Yeah. Like, like many, many of us have gone through transitional moments. Mm. Moments where we have to take certain bends. Yeah. And sometimes we get the bend and sometimes we miss the bend. Yeah. Uh, moments where, uh, from the inside, uh, the rush of many different emotions and not knowing how to manage those emotions not knowing, not having the guide to say, okay, uh, at this particular bend, yeah. in this particular emotion, mm. right, lean just a little bit to the left or lean yeah. just a little bit to the right um, or break over here. And, and, and it was at those moments where, where, because there was no voice, there was no voice yeah. to say, um, B, uh, yeah. throw the bend, take the yeah. bend. Sure. Um, it was in that transitional moments that I believe so many, um, we kind of missed it in those yeah. moments. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I missed it, got caught up into a web and, and what seemed as though it was a way out, yeah. um, actually became a, a, a way down. But how can kids recognize those moments now? Like if there's little boys sitting yeah. at home thinking, you know, if their friends are handing them a joint or, a, or whatever, how can they recognize that as a, oh, this is a moment that can actually change a path in my life and I need yeah. to stay away from this? Yeah. Uh, I think it, it comes back to, 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 to two, two dimensions. The first is the, the, the vigilance of the parents. Yeah. Um, uh, creating the space for, for, for a young person to kind of just share and to be and to speak. Yeah. And then that young person who does not necessarily know where do I find myself at right now and what's going on in me yeah. right now? And if that support system is not there, it, it can become quite daunting. Um, yeah. And then to, to young people out there, it, it's important to not focus on what seems as though it's a high moment mm -hmm. because sometimes when we look at things on the outside and we think that wow, they look happy or that looks like it's making them happy, we, we've got to dig a little bit deeper and yeah. ask a bit of questions. So if I do decide to venture down this route, yeah. what is the outcome of it? You know, uh, that's such brilliant advice. And, you know, just with, with corona, you know, being yeah. the topic, I suppose, of the moment, I was watching these videos of people pushing these carts filled with wine and alcohol, about, amongst other things, so that they can, like, stay at home and stuff. That's obviously not going to be the best way of self-isolating. And I think it's going to be quite difficult for people to be spending two weeks with minimum social engagement as possible. How do we stay motivated? Uh, and, you know, but the same way as you got out of your lulls, how do we stay motivated in really tough times? Um, I think important for us to understand is the difference between faith and fear. Fear creates uh, a, a paralyzing type of situation mm -hmm. where, where faith creates this hope for a better tomorrow. And so important for us to, in this time, I believe, even though there's minimal contact, try and find, number one, that voice of inspiration on the inside yeah. of you um, so that 
you can start uh, having that internal dialogue and say tomorrow will be a better day. Mm. Um, then, then I absolutely love internet as well for this reason. That oh, though, I'm addicted. That, that, <laughs> <laughs> that though we are not, mm. um, though, though there might not be social interaction, um, there are many different mediums where we can find inspiration yeah. via this medium of, of the net. Mm. And so we have to go on the search as an individual to stay motivated. We have to go on the search to find that inspiration. Wow. And so whether it's a, hey, I love you text, or hey, I'm thinking about you type of text, yeah. and hey, I can't be with you right now, but you're in my thoughts, yeah. and um, this WhatsApp gets us closer. Um, yeah. Whether it's something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so Bradley, just speaking about your transformation yeah. and all the things that you've accomplished in your journey, you've put together not only an incredible MPO that is I am passion, but you've also created a toolkit, which I think is genius, which yeah. is I got it. I just love, <laughs> I love the titles that you put on everything yeah. because it truly really makes you feel like, yeah, indeed I do got yeah. it. So how can people interact with the work that you've put together? And firstly, what's it about? Um, so, so I got it, the toolkit, it's not necessarily a book. But I like to call it a voice of contention. So it contends against every false voice on the inside that tries to deny who you are. And so the reason why I call it I got it was because sometimes we feel that we need to add on to get it. Right? We need to add on the, uh, the fingernails, we need to add on all of these different things. Um, we need to dress well to make us feel as though we've got it. But then I thought, no, we don't only have it when we add on. We were born with it. I don't know if you know that song we used to sing in the sports. Say, hear it, gebore, mer it, right? And so that's the type of song we used to sing on, in, in, in the sports. And, and so what I got it speaks to is your internal composition that, that you've got it irrespective of whether you have the degree, whether you don't have the degree, whether you have the nice car, whether you don't have the nice car, yeah. you've got it. You were born with it, right? And what you've got is potential, and potential is limitless. Yeah. And if you can understand that I've got it and I've got potential and it's limitless, and whatever I pour my potential into, it can take the shape thereof. Mm -hmm. Man, then I've got it. I like that. <laughs> the world is as small it. as big I just as... want to learn that last song. <laughs> Say it again, the, the sports walker. Uh, ik heer het. Yeah, ik heer het, geboren meer het. <laughs> ik heer het, geboren meer het. Oh, there you go. <laughs> We've got such inspiring individuals on the show today. And of course, after the break, we continue the conversation by looking at how we can instill the same motivation in our children, especially during this current global crisis. Ik heer het. For immune support, remain at your peak all year round with Immuenza.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, schools will be closing from this coming Wednesday up until the end of the Easter weekend. I think some schools are already closed from today until the 13th of April, also my birthday. After the President's speech last night, this has now been decided. And of course, the Gauteng MEC for Education tweeted that this is an important opportunity for kids to also be educated at home. Mm. It's not just a free holiday. Absolutely. Now, we're back with Dr. Emil Reed, and we're join and joining us now is registered um, councillor Manetsi Mpungu Punga. Lovely yes. to meet you, sir. Now, Hello. with this whole topic and it being a Monday, we like to focus on how to raise our kids and instilling good values in them. So how important is motivation within the kids? Uh, basically, uh, if each and every family would make um, kids' efforts and um, uh, attempts to do things be part of their of their day-to-day -day lives uh, it would raise kids and a generation that is full of motivation and uh, so that is why it is so important to have motivation as part of our day-to-day -day menu for the kids so schools are closed and I think there's a lot of children uh, that I've heard of a few cases in Cape Town and Johannesburg where kids actually got infected as well by the coronavirus Apparently, I know that I heard a rumor that they were saying that children won't actually get as sick from it. What is the infection rate like with children and how harmful is it to them? Well, at this point in time, we, we actually don't know okay. a lot. The cases that we had um, that's been described in the literature and also case studies from other countries, we have seen that, that, that the kids as even newborns can can yeah. can yeah we have saw that there was a little the child virus. With, with the corona the other and, day and the, the what we also saw uh, is that they are not getting ill so they do have uh, viremic symptoms flu symptoms but otherwise they they do quite well okay. wow. and and that the highest group uh, and the highest risk groups are still the elders mm. uh, above the age of 65 with with comorbid diseases like mm. lung problems yeah. uh, dialysis chronic kidney function etc um, those are the people that actually becomes very very sick so the fear is just your child getting covid but then going home and passing it on to their grannies or their grandfathers that's where that gets really really dangerous here yes. And Manetsi, on, on your side, as a registered um, counsellor, mm -hmm. a lot of parents right now have to talk to their kids and bring down the hysteria, make sure we all have a level head and we know what we're dealing with yep. moving forward. So how do you sit down with your kid and you have to break down such a mammoth virus that's everywhere, you turn on TV, you go onto the newspaper, mm -hmm. what kind of conversations should be happening within the household? Uh, currently, the conversations that are taking place in our households, it's jokes about uh, COVID-19 and kids are running away with that and uh, spreading to other kids of which it's a good time to sit down with your kids and uh, have a play kind of a setup where you'll make it a child-friendly topic uh, to talk about with uh, those uh, tender minds because at that age, they, that is where they are able to grasp the concepts and move forward with whatever measures uh, you have recommended to them. Make it a discussion more than an instruction. Yeah, and then just to continue on that, as Jeannie said um, just now, that a lot of kids are going to be learning from home now. So how do you make sure they stay motivated, they stay focused, they keep their eye on the prize at the end of the day? Because we do want to raise successful, intelligent yeah. kids. Um, it, it's so coincidental that even varsity students yeah. are told to stay at home and uh, self-isolate, mm -hmm. some of them. Uh, so it is a good opportunity to bring that bond between a young sister who is in primary school and a big sister who is in uh, varsity, mm -hmm. where they come together and uh, engage in playful activities that will make sure one day they will be uh, where their big sister is at mm -hmm. and they are active uh, with uh, activities that will encourage uh, hygiene mm -hmm. and uh, repetitive um, uh, habits uh, which can Love still be uh, motivated as part of uh, keeping um, 
uh, 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 hygiene and uh, stay away from things that might be contaminated. I love that. I think right now it's very crucial for us all, whether you're working from home, studying from home, or just having to keep a clean, healthy space around you, Keep your eye on the prize. Do not lose yeah. focus. Mm. Do not get um, tempted by all these things that are happening around you. I've heard on the radio that it's also important to set working hours. Even if you're working at home, set those working yeah. hours the same way you're to work. encourage your discipline. Yeah. Mm. But also, I think while children are at home, it's obviously not a free holiday. So they should be encouraged to be reading, to be going over their syllabuses. And actually, depending on the age of the kid, but I really think parents should be having conversations about hygiene and cleanliness because it is bizarre how few people have got like only now we so conscious yes. of it but actually washing yeah. your hands should be a thing even without COVID-19 yeah. thank you so much for being here today and uh, hopefully the message of calming down the hysteria mm. has definitely been penetrated to the nation thank you very much for sharing much some welcome. more information with us absolutely now um, it's been a show filled with inspiration and very important information now keep your family safe wash your hands and do not panic <laughs> this is the time um, that we take at home and this is what we need you to know from here, us here at Afternoon Express. Now we'll see you again tomorrow for an Afternoon Express cook along. Until then, good night and God bless. Ciao. And wash your hands. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.